Hello everyone. In the days leading up to a patch, you often see benchmark predictions float around the internet. So we predict how much damage is a build going to do after the patch based on just the patch notes. Now, if you don't know anything about the damage formula or how damage works in Guild Wars 2, these damage predictions may sound extremely impressive and it sounds extremely complicated. How could you possibly see the future? But with this video, I hopefully can dispel, dispel all those myths and actually just explain to you how it's extremely easy to make these predictions yourself and you can actually do them yourself if you want to. Now, the key to understanding the predictions is to understand the damage formula. So let's take a short look at how damage is calculated in Guild Wars 2. We are just going to look at strike damage because that's what most of the predictions are about anyway. So as you can read on the wiki in the damage article, damage done is calculated by multiplying weapon strength, which is just something that depends on the weapon, times your power, which is seen in the hero panel, times a skill specific coefficient, which is different for each skill, and divide it by the target's armor. Now, the target's armor is usually 2,597. Um, most, most of the boss enemies in the, in the game, in raids, for example, have this specific armor value. It actually doesn't matter for the calculations we're going to do here, because we're fighting a standardized kitty golem. And this, this one has always the same armor, and it doesn't matter what it is. And, but this is not the entirety of the damage formula. There are some factors missing here. For example, if you critically hit, you multiply this by your critical damage stat, which can be around 250%, for example. So you would multiply this by 2.5. And if the target is affected by vulnerability, you will multiply by 1.25 for the 25% increase. If your damage is then modified by some gear effect, for example, you have the superior rune of the scholar, you multiply by 1.05 for this 5% increase. So you, there are basically a bunch of factors that come in here as well. And some of these factors are not very straightforward, but I think that is time for, that is, there is a story for a different video that focuses entirely on the difference between additive modifiers and multiplicative modifiers. But for now, you just need to know about this damage formula being a bunch of bunch of factors all multiplied together. Here in this spreadsheet, I have added this other modifiers thing. We actually won't care about them in this video. In this video, let's talk mainly about coefficient and power. Let's imagine that we read in patch notes that I gets plus 200 power. The question I'm going to answer now is, how much does this buff your DPS? Well, we can take a look at the log and see that that I does 9,503 power DPS. And DPS comes from adding up a bunch of skill damages and dividing by total time. So you have basically DPS is equal to um, skill one plus skill two and plus skill three. And by this, I mean, I don't mean different skills necessarily. This can be the same skill again. This can be just auto attacks. And we do this a bunch of times. And then we divide by fighting time, which is 100.5 seconds in this golem lock. Um, so this is then the damage dealt. And each of these skills we used here has a factor that is power. And the power is the same for all of these skills. That means by the laws of math, we can essentially factor out power. We write it as, as a factor before that and divide it here every time 
So we multiplied it out of the out of this equation. We have it just as a factor before. Now if that I has a, gets an increase of 200 power, what we need to know is the current power. And let's just say it's 4,100 right now, and it's going to be increased to 4,300 in the patch because we get 200 plus power. Now we can just take the DPS, divide by the current power, and multiply the new power. So if you do that, times uh, divided by this one times this one, and this gives us the new strike damage we deal. But we also have condition damage, which is not affected, so we have to add this back as well. And this would be the new benchmark prediction. So we would say that if that eye gets plus 200 power, um, the DPS increases from 40k to roughly 41,968. You can now say, hang on for a second. You said that data has power of 4,100. But that's not actually quite true. Because if you take a look, the power of a data is not always the same. It is, we have an assassin signet active, which is plus 540. We have a passive, which is plus 180. And we have a neither active nor passive, which is just zero bonus power. And so what we would have to look at is actually three power values. And the active is, and then post patch that would be for 120, for 300, and for 560. And if you do the math under different signets, uh, signet states, for example, up here, we would get a different, let's add the condition damage, we would get a different benchmark prediction, and we get a different benchmark prediction if we assume that the signet is always in its active portion. Um, we could get this benchmark prediction. So, uh, but as you can see, these are different numbers than this one. And if you wanted to be very exact about, about it, we would have, have to go case by case. So we would have to analyze the strike damage and really take a look how much damage we do in the window where, where the signet is active. And then we take a look at we tally up all, all the active parts, we calculate the DPS for that, then we calculate the buff, the effect of the 200 power in that circumstance. And we do the same for having signet passive, and we do the same for having no signet at all. And we tally up those DPS values and get then a a sort of mix of, of these three numbers, something in between these, these three. Now, as you can see, this is already way more effort to put in, and it's honestly way more of effort than I'm willing to put in, um, just to get slightly more exact predictions. So when I make a prediction, I care about a ballpark figure. I care about knowing that adding 200 power is roughly going to put that I at 42k, whether it's, it's 42.1 or 41.9, isn't really important to me. And it's probably not important for the average Guild Wars 2 player either. So that's why we say, okay, we take this as a reasonable approximation. It's somewhere in between these two values, but we'll leave it at that. Um, having understood this part, let's take a look at concrete patch notes and see that that I actually doesn't get plus 200 power. This is completely fictitious. 
what they do change is they will take a look at coefficients. And so what happens here is that a coefficient of, let's say, of double strike is increased from 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. Now, similar to how we, han we could handle the, the detailed case of having signet, no signet, or signet active, we can actually easily do, uh, do, do this with different skill uses. So in the log, we can take a look how much damage does wild strike or double strike, how much damage does double strike contribute. Double strike contributes 1794 to our total DPS number. And we could, can write that down here. And we can now see that double strike gets its, its coefficient increased from 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. And again, similar to how we did it with power, we can now take out the coefficient and divide by the old coefficient, multiply by the new coefficient, and this yields us this new DPS value. Um, just dividing 1794 by 0 0.3 and multiplying 0 0.4. And this means that the buff of double strike will cause a DPS increase of around 600 DPS. So we do that for all the skills. Now for Heartseekers, it's a bit more complicated because Heartseeker actually, it has a bunch of different coefficient changes. Its coefficient above 50% health changes from one to 1 1.5, which is a 50% increase, but it changes from 1.5 to two below 50% health, which is just a 33% increase. And it changes from 2 to 2.5, which is just a 25% increase below 25% health. So even though the patch note reads in a way that it may, may seem that the increase is the same for, for each health bracket, it's actually more impactful above 50% health because not all coefficients are equal, they, it's important by how much incre you increase as a percentage, it's not important by how much you increase as an absolute value. The same is also true for double strike. The double strike buff here is way more impactful than the, double the lotus strike buff. Even though it's 0 0.1 in both cases, this is much bigger percentage-wise. This is just something to keep in mind. So for Heartseeker as well, um, we couldn't just go to the log and multiply this here, this 10k DPS. Um, we, we couldn't just multiply this by, by like um, uh, 2.5 and then divide by 2 because not all of the Heartseeker uses are actually below 25% health. So if you take a naive approach and assume that all Heartseeker uses happen be below 25% health, you actually get a lower bound on the DPS, which is around 45,000 DPS. It's just a lower border. But in actuality, a lot of the Heartseeker uses happen above 50% health, and I went into the log to calculate this. Now the log doesn't actually offer this functionality because it only does health brackets of of 20% and not a split at 50% health. So I had to do some math on this um, to basically look at each health bracket individually and then come up with this, these separate DPS contributions. So, and this then in total, if you now apply the buffs to it, leads to different levels of DPS differences. And as you can see, the buff is way bigger above 50% health. And finally, we re get to a prediction of 46K DPS. And that's essentially how this kind of thing works. We can use the patch notes, use these increased power coefficients by such and such, and a DPS log, 
in order to make a benchmark prediction in a very basic fashion. Obviously, this benchmark prediction, again, is not perfectly accurate because, for example, what could change with the coefficient changes is how much time we spend in each health bracket. And this could change how many heart seekers we get into each health bracket, which could then change the effect of the patch. If you want that kind of accuracy, either you do a full simulation of, of the entire fight, you or you just wait for the patch day to get really the accuracy down to 100 dps or so. Um, here we are looking at ballpark figures and I think having a damage number of 46k um, wander around the net is accurate enough for our purposes. We don't need much more accuracy. What could also change is that these, these new coefficients could um, influence the rotation you want to do. And obviously, if you find a better rotation that now makes more use of Heartseeker above 50% health because it got way better, um, you could do that. And this would lead to even higher DPS. So you can maybe understand that this 46k can also be seen as a lower bound and there might be a benchmark that goes, goes above. What you could do to anticipate a changed rotation is you could um, do a golem log with the new rotation, even though it's worse right now, you can do the same math then and arrive at a prediction of what this new rotation is going to achieve post-patch. And that's something we did when, when Reaper the staff got changed by a lot. That was actually more complicated because cooldown changes were also involved. Um, but there we basically benched a weaker build and then made some, did some math and concluded that it's going to be better than the Axe Warhorn build post-patch, which it was true in the end. And the same could be done here. If a new rotation shows up, you could bench the new rotation and make this map do this math and we would arrive at a, at a different benchmark prediction, obviously. Now, uh, to wrap up this video, um, we can do this for any kind of class. It's not just about that eye. For example, you can take a look at a power alacrity spectral log and make a DPS prediction for that post patch. This is better than Divine Renegade, by the way. And you can make a prediction for a Condi class as well, which is obviously also getting buffed due to the strike modifiers, um, but to a much smaller extent, of course, because the, the strike damage skills contribute way less than DPS if you're in full Viper. But it's just, it's just something you can do in general whenever patch notes come out. So that's it for this video. I hope this explanation wasn't too rushed. I hope everything was clear. If something isn't clear and you want to wish some more detail on some of the more advanced stuff you can do with this, feel free to ask in the comments and I'm happy to provide some more explanations. Thanks for watching.